poor little Cinderella. Who was more deserving of finding a prince and turning into a princess? Yeah, I'm right. First off, Cinderella did not have to do all the hardest work in the house. Our stepfather was a man of a rank. Remember? My mother was no peasant. We had such fine rooms and beautiful clothes and status and had to be invited to the king's ball. So we certainly had maids and servants to scrub the floors and wash the dishes. So the Rella offered to help with the work. Probably because she had nothing else to do. She seemed... She didn't seem interested in much besides pleasing people. It drove me crazy. And she did not have to sleep in a straw bed in a poor room at the top of the house. I think if I would put her up there. No, certainly not. She had a good bedroom, just like the rest of us. The story goes that my sister and I were proud. That's true enough. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with being proud of what you can do, of what you've worked hard to learn well? All those fine clothes people kept talking about were of my sister's making. She was into fashion design, and as for me, well, it was known I could ride a horse to win most competitions in the land. So sure, we were proud. But vain? Yes. We spent a lot of time in front of that full-length mirror. My sister had to see the effect of her creations, and so I suppose she's vain, as one gets to be one in that line of work. And as a favour, especially on days too wet or too cold for the horses to be out, I often modelled her half-finished pieces for her. But that's it. I wasn't even good-looking by contemporary standards. No peaches or cream in my complexion. And it's true. Cinderella wasn't invited to the ball. But only because the king thought she was too young. And we certainly didn't know her like you think. We called her into our rooms and asked her for advice on her clothes to make her feel part of the excitement. She liked that, you know. Her younger sisters are. She wanted the iron in this to mend that and even let her do our hair. I mean, we never called her Cinder Wench. Actually, even Cinderella. Her nickname was Kinderella. Little child. And somehow the K must have gotten changed to a C. As for what happened to the ball, that's true too. She was very beautiful. I knew little stepsister. She never denied that. And when beauty and wealth came together... Most people fall over themselves like asses. Those at the ball were no different. To them, appearance is everything. My sister was stunned by Cinderella's gown, and she got, it's true, but out of professional interest. Not jealousy, as most people would think. I wasn't jealous either. I just wanted to ride one of those impressive silver stallions she came with. And as for that bit about the yellow dress, the story goes Cinderella asked my sister if she could borrow it to wear to the next ball, and my sister said, no way. Well, I don't know. That might have happened. I wasn't there. That yellow dress is one of her favourites. One of the first dresses she made. But I think that if my sister had said no, she would have offered her another instead. Then again, Cinderella's tone can be sweet and self fishing sometimes. I can imagine my sister saying... No, out of sheer irritation and leaving it at that. The rest of the story is pretty much accurate. All three of us went to the second ball. Cinderella forgot about her curfew. Lost the slipper on the way out. And there's one thing I want to set straight, though. I did not try on the guy's slipper. Quite apart from the fact that I didn't want to marry that prince, or any prince, or anyone at all, actually. A glass slipper. You've got to be kidding. That'd be worse than wearing high heels. Not only would it make walking difficult, with the obvious risk of broken glass, cutting, and bedding, it would discourage me altogether. No, thank you. But as I said to Cinderella, if the shoe fits, wear it. And we all 
will live happily ever after.